We're out of time. Roller coasters have come and gone. Only some become legends for their intensity and thrills. Each and every year, coaster fans like you venture to the parks, searching for that one special ride that stands out above the rest. You submitted your rankings, and now it's time to reveal the group of elite roller coasters that you have voted as the best of the best. CoasterNet Uncut is proud to present the 2017 Thrilling 32. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CoasterNet Uncut. It is the final four of the Thrilling 32 Bracket Challenge, the semi-final matchups coming at you this week. I am Danny Miller from Binghamton, Binghamton, New York, in this very fancy Dueling Dragons mug that I recently acquired, thanks to my dad here. And uh, I'm alongside my partner in crime, as always, and your bar check from Chicago, Illinois. How's it going, Andy? You know what, Danny? Uh, we've been through a lot in this Thrilling 32 Bracket Challenge. Uh, but I think we're finally at the point where we have four really outstanding wood coasters, almost, and four really outstanding <laughs> steel coasters <laughs> that I'm, I, I really don't know how this is going to go here, Danny. I'm really excited to see which coasters not only move on into the championship, but I can't tell you right now who's even going to win the whole thing. So I'm really excited. So let's get into the brackets right away here. All right, well, let's jump right into it. Now, before we get the hate mail here, we're putting up the Wood Final Four bracket up on your screen right now. Blank, it's ready to be populated with our semifinal matchups. But before we get the hate mail, let's clarify. The slide here does say 2016 Wood Final Four, even though this is the 2017 bracket challenge. This is from the 2016 Ride Warrior Choice Awards and from the 2016 season poll. So that's why it says 2016 Wood Final Four. So don't be sending us any nasty emails or comments here uh, that we got the year wrong because we didn't. That is intentional. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's go over to the first semifinal matchup, which is the heavyweight matchup to, to settle all heavyweight matchups, and it's one that we've seen before. Uh, we've seen several times before, actually, in this poll. It is the Voyage from Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana, going up against El Toro, from Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. And if we look at the side-by-side -side comparison here, as we like to do, th this on paper could not get much closer than it r really is right now. Voyage, number two in 2012. Then number two again, 2013. The champion in 2014. Number two again last year in 2015. The highest ranked coaster remaining from last year's poll as Outlaw Run was knocked out in the first round by El Toro, which in 2012 was number three, dropped to number four in 2013, and then back to number three for 2014 and 2015. So this is a two versus three matchup from last season and Andy I am very, very definitive on this that I think Voyage is the far superior coaster we talk about Voyage on this show a lot um, it is no secret that I am not the biggest El Toro fan in the world I, I, I love El Toro I think it's a great roller coaster uh, it, it's, it's, it's still one of my favorites but I do not think it is a top five wooden coaster anymore uh, in the world I think Voyage is definitively the best wood coaster in the world your thoughts? I, you know, I, I can't disagree with you on your final point there, that Voyage is definitely one of the best wood coaster in the entire world. I, however, do have El Toro ranked a lot higher than you do. Um, you know, I, I, can see, I can see the attraction with it of why people love El Toro. It's those really tall, those really steep hills. Uh, you get some fantastic airtime. Uh, you're going, going up and down those hills. You know, I, I, I can understand how maybe the second half isn't all, is, isn't all that. Uh, you, know, uh, it, you know, some people argue it's not a complete roller coaster, but the second half loses a lot of its speed. You just go through maneuvers. And I, I know you like to make the point of, well, you know, if you have a really good first half and a lackluster second half, 
with an overall short ride time, then what exactly are you praising here? Is this really a number one wood coaster? Now you flip over to the other side and you have that traditional wood coaster experience in the first half of Voyage with the hills going up and down. Uh, some Now with Thunderbird, you know, I was worried with Thunderbird that maybe Voyage would lose something uh, because of the interaction, but I, I think it's gotten only better uh, because of the Thunderbird yeah. interaction. Agreed. Um, you know, you still got the wonderful, uh, the wonderful tunnels, and then once you make that turnaround in the middle of the forest – uh, it, it's it's gloves off, it's no holds barred, it's balls to the wall, uh, complete action, uh, you know, from start to finish back there. Um, and, and, and like I love to say, uh, God bless those trip breaks on there, because otherwise, <laughs> uh, otherwise you'd be dead. Uh, there's no question. Uh, there are so many times where, uh, you know, coming into the final break run on Voyage, that literally I am gasping for air because I've either been screaming yeah, so much. Um, I, I've been yelling so much. It's hard to catch your breath with the maneuvers you're going through, with the up and down, the laterals, the side to side, the you know the, the perpendicular uh, to, to the ground. Uh, all that stuff uh, makes it why I think Voyage is the number one wood coaster. Some people though say it's too intense. Some people say that you know what, maybe the first half is what, what a wood coaster should Some be. Some people need to grow grow a pair. Well, I, I, that's you know that's my that's my argument here. Um, you know, but when you look at these two, these two coasters, um, I, I think they couldn't be more different, to be honest with you, where you have a really long ride versus, you know, a, a short to moderate length ride. You have uh, El Toro being more of a hill type ride where it's those hills that give you that ejector air off of them, whereas Voyage is the sustained air time uh, throughout, what, what is it? How many seconds is it? 24.6? Uh, well, I don't have the air time mug, but I yeah. think it says 24.2 seconds. It's yeah. all on one of my other mugs. Yeah, absolutely. It's somewhere in that range, and I counted one day, and, and you're in, I, I tell you what, that's pretty damn close. I didn't have a stopwatch. I was just counting in my head, but it was pretty close to that. It's that sustained air time you know, I, I, on Voyage, I've never experienced a ride where you're coming off the, the mid-course break run, you go into that, that, you know, into the tunnel, into the double down, and you're coming out faster off the other end, it feels like. It's crazy. Um, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what magic they use, uh, but Voyage is my pick to go to the finals here. Yeah, and, and I think the other thing, we talk about the first and second half of El Toro. Don't forget that Voyage essentially has three halves. You've got the first mm -hmm. half, the second half, but then you've got the middle half, if you will, of the mm -hmm. spaghetti bowl there and all the twisted turns and the 90-degree uh, bank turns, and somehow they throw airtime in there as well. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, it's, it's clear what our decision is, but much to our dismay, it is actually El Toro. Mm -hmm. Defeating Voyage this year in the semifinals. Uh, Voyage mm. was victorious the last couple of times that these two coasters met up. It is El Toro moving on to the championship uh, round this year. Um, uh, when the rankings came in, you could definitely call me uh, shocked, surprised, maybe even shocked um, that El Toro was higher than Voyage this year. Uh, that has never happened in the history of this poll. Uh, but this year, the voters, it just goes to show you our voting pool does change every year. Uh, for the first time in the five-year history of this poll, El Toro has outranked Voyage. That, 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 that's a heartbreaker there. Um, you know, that is a heartbreaker. Um, it, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say it, but I, I think the voters got it wrong, Danny. I, I really do. Um, you uh, know, I, I agree. I think the voters got it wrong. Um, but, you know, let's move on to the other half where I think this one. <laughs> well, and, and like you said, you know, we were very proud of the Elite Eight groups, and for the most part, we were very proud of the Final Four groups. Uh, you know, you, you are not as much a Boulder Dash fan, but here it is uh, once again in the Final Four after not making it last year by after losing to El Toro in the first round. Boulder Dash from Lake Compounds. Uh, going up against Lightning Rod from Dollywood. Now, Boulder Dash looking to make it to the championship game for the first time uh, since the very first year of this poll. And it would actually take on El Toro and have chance at revenge for last year's first-round loss. 
But but then we've got lightning rods sitting over here. And, you know, you and I talked, we talked about this uh, on each show, how first we had Hades 360, and then we had Gold Striker, two rides that a lot of people haven't ridden. And then lightning rod went up against Phoenix last time, and it beat Phoenix. And the one question that I think you had to have about lightning rod through the first two rounds was, well, it's beaten rides that not a lot of people have ridden, and, mm-hmm. you know, the Phoenix was a bona fide, tried-and-true top-five wooden coaster, and it always has been. And the question was, could Lightning Rod beat one of those rides? And it did. So now you've got Boulder Dash here, which is along the same lines of Phoenix, a bona fide top-five perennial wood coaster in this poll and others, one that is generally liked by most people and is ranked very highly by most people. So knowing that it beat Phoenix, I, mean, I we kind of know where your thoughts on this. You think Lightning Rod moving on here? I, You know, Danny, I think Lightning Rod moves on here. And I, I'll tell you what, if I'm sitting down in front of my bracket right now and I got Lightning Rod as champion – I think what we just witnessed on the other side of this bracket, I think I'm a lot more confident right now in my decision. I think Lightning Rod moves on over Boulder Dash, and I think Lightning Rod versus El Toro is, and and once again, it comes down to the age-old question of, you know, uh, number of people who have ridden versus how great that ride is. But I'll tell you what, if it was Lightning Rod Voyage, I'd have a lot more question marks in my mind. But I'm telling you what, if it's Absolutely. lightning, if it's lightning rod El Toro, I, I gotta, I, I gotta tell you, I got my money on lightning rod going all the way here, and it's, it, and it wouldn't be the first time that we saw a brand new ride take home the thrilling thirty two crown. Uh, actually, we saw it just last year with Fury three two five. So maybe two years in a row we see it here, Danny Miller. Maybe I'm skipping over this matchup well. for a reason. I don't know. But I, I think I think this is an easy decision here with Lightning Rod moving over Boulder Dash. I couldn't tell you to put this in perspective. I couldn't tell you one element of what happens on Boulder Dash. I wrote it once. I was done. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, Lightning Rod. I, well, maybe that was your problem. You didn't give it a fair chance. Yeah, yeah, because because things change a lot usually like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, you so, probably wrote it in the morning, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, you didn't you even know, get to write it after actually, it warmed up. So actually, I wrote it in the late afternoon. Actually, it was almost to closing of the park because we had uh, the day we rode Boulder Dash. We had gone to uh, Quasi uh, that morning, so we were at. I rode Wooden oh, Warrior, yeah. drove up to Lake Compound, so we were kind of in a rush where we were, you know, up against the time, the time clock to get, you know, to get everything in before the park closed. Um, so we got, we got a good ride. And I want to say it was even raining earlier in the day. Uh, so it probably was a little slicked up as well. Uh, you know, I still don't remember any of it. So uh, lightning rod, though, on the other <laughs> hand, my God, the first time we rode that Danny oh, Miller. You and I rode we, that together. And, we, and the folks, the folks who were there when we did that onboard audio yes. from your pocket, <laughs> I, I think they, I think the buffering as we were going on the other side yes. of the mountain, we heard, what? Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, shit. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, Danny Miller, I did not need a second ride to know that lightning rod was my was it going to be in my top five. So there was no second ride uh, needed yes. there. Uh, that that was no question uh, that that quadruple down, uh, you know, uh, especially with that speed hill at the end. Oh, my God. That is a ride from start to finish. Uh, only one flaw in the whole ride, and that is the pothole at the at the bottom of the first drop. And supposedly, Which supposedly, some people are saying has been fixed. Supposedly, some they said they fixed, fixed it. So we'll, we'll find out when we ride again for ourselves. Yeah, but. absolutely. So that was the only flaw I could find with the entire ride. Uh, you know, lightning rod. It's still not my number one though. And some people may say, well, why? And it's just goes back to Voyage being that complete ride. And now that Voyage is out of these four coasters, uh, Lightning Rod is, is, is the highest ranked among these four in my book. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you have a very good point in that possibly Lightning Rod's ticket to the championship here might not lie in itself. It might be El Toro taking down Voyage. Uh, because it is Lightning Rod moving on to the championship to face El Toro, Lightning Rod from Dollywood in its debut year, despite all the issues. Not only did it win Best New Ride, 
of uh, 2016 in the Golden Ticket Awards, um, it is now in the championship matchup uh, and has gone the distance, essentially, here uh, to make it to the final game. Lightning Rod and El Toro will be your championship matchup uh, yeah. next week. And, 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 and you know, uh, if we're if we're pulling the crowd again, I got to think people are going to go one way on that. I got to think a lot of people are going to like that lightning rod attraction. We saw it happen last year with Fury 325. Um, you know, I, I think yep. lightning may strike twice here uh, with, with, with lightning rod. <laughs> yeah, I see what you did there. Well, and to be completely honest with you now, um, now that Voyage is out, I will be rooting for lightning rod. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, personally, I do not think El Toro is deserving of another, uh, of, a, of a number one wood coaster uh, slot. I think Lightning Rod is is a much superior ride to El Toro, uh, to be quite frank with you. So I will be rooting for Lightning Rod next week, uh, but we will see what happens when it comes time to find out the winners next week. So uh, there you go. El Toro and Lightning Rod are your finalists for the uh, wood bracket. What do you say we head over to the steel coasters, Andy? Yes, that's, you know, we, we had some heartbreaks, but we're going to see what happens in the steel round. I, I like all four of these rides. Danny, why don't you give us a little preview here? All right. Well, the first matchup here, we've got Fury 325 from Carowinds in Charlotte, North Carolina, going up against Intimidator 305 from Kings Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. So now taking a look at the side-by-side here, these two coasters met last year in the championship game. Fury was number one. Intimidator 305 was number two. Intimidator 305, prior to that, was the champion in the first year of 2012 and then was the runner-up to Leviathan in 2013 and then then was the runner-up again in 2014 to Bizarro from Six Flags New England and then again the runner-up for the third straight year uh, last year, this time to Fury 325. So Intimidator 305 has been the runner-up the last three years to different coasters each year. So d- does Intimidator maybe gain some of that momentum back? Does Fury kind of stay where it's at? Um, you know, it'll be the first time ever that we don't see at least one of these. Co- th- it'll be the first time ever that, um, that essentially – one of these coasters won't make it into the finals because Fury was in the finals in its only year last year, and Intimidator has always been in the finals. So um, one of these two coasters for the first time will not be in the championship game. And uh, I know where you sit on this, and uh, you and I agree here that Fury is the superior ride. Well, you know, I'm really glad that we have this matchup again. Uh, because I get to tell my lovely story that I love to tell anytime someone speaks of these two rides, that I actually rode these two rides in the same day, about four hours, day, right. in the same day, about four hours That's apart right. from one another. You know, in the morning, I got 14 amazing rides on uh, Fury 325. Um, you know, had had some front row rides, some back row rides. You any sat on the ride a few trains, you know, maybe five, six trains without getting up. It was an amazing experience, Danny Miller. Um, you know, and then uh, we drove up to, you know, Kings Dominion, which is about a four hour drive or so. Uh, and, and that evening got on some rides on Intimidator 305, had about 10 good rides on I-305. Uh, Danny, there is no question in my mind right now, zero question, uh, that there is no comparison to be made between these two rides because Fury 325 is that much better. Now, if I would have ridden I-305 maybe first, maybe when it first debuted, maybe my opinion would be completely different. I don't know. But I can tell you having ridden both rides in the same day, I-305 for the first time, Fury-325 for the second time, because I was on it the previous day, um, there's no comparison here. Fury-325 is by far the better ride. Uh, I, you know, it's, 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 you have those, you, you, there's almost two movements in Fury's layout, that the first half is all intensity and speed with those high lats that are really extreme due to, um, you know, the high speed that you're going at. They're, they're, if you sit in the right seats, they're literally trying to throw you out of the seat on that first turnaround, and then definitely on the Clubble Treff turn, uh, once again, trying to throw you out. Uh, it's amazing what Fury, and then you hit that second half, 
and you get that traditional B and M hyper experience uh, with, right. with the hills up and down that are really more intense than a lot of the hills on the B and M hypers. So you know, Fury has everything that I think people want: the speed, the intensity, the airtime, uh, the you know, the floater air. What other roller coaster can you name that encompasses all of those things in the same thing? Everyone always says, ah, you know, this this ride's missing this or that ride's missing that. Uh, Fury, and, and like I said before, Fury is only missing one element, and that is Leviathan Speed Hill. If you put that on there, I, it may even de- it, Fury may have even dethroned uh, that green coaster up at Cedar Point uh, for my number one spot, but it did not. So if it had a Speed Hill, maybe. Uh, on, on the flip side, though, I three hundred five. Um, you know, I like I three hundred five a lot. I like the first drop. Uh, you know, that turn, the blacking out. Danny, I don't know if I'm getting old, but, may, but maybe, you know, maybe I'm getting old. It's not I, your thing, is it? It's, you know what, it's not my thing. Um, I, you know, I like to ride rides uh, <clears throat> and marathon rides. I've always thought what ride would be the ride that killed me. You know, I've ridden Gemini 100 times in a day. I've ridden Patriot 25 times in a day in a row. I've ridden, ridden Prowler 25 times in a row. I said, well, maybe it'd be the Wood Coaster. Maybe it'd be the Invert Coaster. Uh, but I can tell you what, we rode I-305 10 times uh, and had to get off each time and walk around. And, dude, I, I was, you know, I was I could go more, but I'm like, I don't want to. You know, I, I, I said it's right. time to move on. Um, you, you know, so it, I like I-305. But Fury is a ride that if you put me on it at 8 o'clock in the morning, I could sit there at 8 o'clock at night and still be happy, uh, the happiest coaster yep. enthusiast in the world. Agreed. You put me on I-305 at 8 o'clock in the morning, and you check me at 8, at 8 p.m., I might be dead. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, n- not a false statement, and and Fury, F- like you said, Fury has a nice little bit of a flow to it, and, and yeah. it, it kind of has, um, it kind of has a good rhythm. Intimidator three hundred five is, I don't want to say it doesn't flow and it doesn't have rhythm, but it's kind of like a big jumble of we're going to throw as much as we yeah. can into this really quickly and kind of throw it all at you at once. Uh, Fury has a nice, uh, you know, a, a rhythm and a tempo to it. Uh, you know, to break out some musical terms here for a minute, yeah. but um, you know, it's you know, it doesn't exactly tell a story, but it, you know, there there is a certain rhythm to the ride. Um, so it, it is Fury three two five moving on to the championship once again. I uh, don't think there should be much of a surprise there. Most people selecting Fury to make it to their championship game here. Um, lots of people selecting Fury as their uh, champion fifty nine out of seventy three to be exact. Again, we've been reading that number off to you. Fury three two five going back to the championship, Andy. Not I, I can't say that I'm surprised. Uh, you know, I, I wondered because of the matchup here, because of how well I-305 has done in the past, uh, but Fury seems to be this unstoppable force. And I'm looking at the other side of the bracket here, and, you know, I, I love Maverick. I know nothing about Expedition G-Force, uh, but I got to say, maybe maybe this is, a, just as I said, maybe Lightning Rod has the easy victory here. I'm looking at the other side of this, and I'm thinking maybe Fury. Is this a done deal? This might be a done deal. The two-time champion, two-time, two-time champion, Fury three two five. <laughs> wow, wow, Andy's Andy Andy's calling uh, Andy's <laughs> calling the match already. It seems uh, before his uh, buddy Maverick is even uh, yeah you know doesn't yeah. even know if he's gonna move know if it's gonna get knocked out or move <laughs> on here before it's even officially out of the race. I mean, wow, I, I never thought I'd see the day where Andy would count Maverick out. Um, um, but uh, he, I, I think he might be doing that. Uh, I think but anyways, I might be doing that. let's talk about the other semi. Let's talk about the other semifinal matchup. We've got Maverick from. Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio, <clears throat> going up against Expedition G-Force from Holiday Park over there in Germany. Uh, the, the pride of Germany, the pride of the Germans over there, the pride of the Europeans, really, uh, when you when you talk about coasters that are consistently in top five lists, Expedition G-Force is that ride. Um, and if you, you know, we look at the side-by-side here, we, we talked about this last week about how Maverick just – 
you know, really surprising people this year by making it to the Final Four historically has been in the mid, you know, the mid teens uh, in this poll 14, then 15, then 19, and then back up to 13 last year, making it to the Final Four this year. Now, we don't know exactly where it ranked. It is possible it is lower than four. Um, you know, the, the way with the bracket being random, we do, we are not guaranteed the top four coasters uh, every year in the final four. So it is possible that that happened. Um, we will find out next week when we reveal the full rankings. Expedition G-Force, the first two years, not enough riders, was number 11 in 2014 and then up to number five last year. So Expedition G-Force has been kind of right on the cusp of the mm-hmm. final four and was a top five coaster last year. And with the increased uh, European participation this year, you wonder if maybe Expedition G-Force um, moved up. It, it's kind of a tough thing to gauge because of Expedition G-Force knocking off Millennium Force uh, last week. Uh, because Millennium Force was so low last year, um, it, it's kind of tough to gauge where exactly Expedition G-Force is coming in because we don't know quite where Millennium Force landed. Um, so that's what I think makes this difficult. If you were to give people this matchup right now and say, here, just pick this one matchup, I think you'd have a lot of people struggling with this, and you'd probably get a pretty even split, to be completely honest with you, uh, because I think most people want to vote for Maverick, and they feel like Maverick deserves it and doesn't get the credit it deserves. And then you've got other people saying, well, we hear so much about Expedition G-Force, and it does so well in the golden tickets and, you know, the Mitch Hawker poll year after year after year. You know, maybe that really is the real deal, and I think you'd have a lot of people struggling with it. Well, you know, I, I think you really have here the story of two rising stars. I think that tale of the tape that we just looked at uh, shows both of these coasters really <laughs> jumping up this pole in the last few years, which I think makes it even more difficult to gauge which one is going to be th- the favorite here. Um, you know, you, you have the European voters, uh, that like Expedition G-Force, personally, watching some POVs, I have a few reservations about Expedition G-Force. I've said in the past that looks legit. I've watched it again. I say, well, maybe it looks a little too much like uh, Bizarro in New England that you know I'm not a huge fan of. Um, you know, so it, it, so there's, there's a lot of question marks for me on Expedition G-Force. Um, you know, a lot of people that I that have written it that I talk to seem to love it. Um, you know, but but some people also like you love things like Bizarro, and I can't understand that. So, uh, a- anywho, <laughs> on, on the flip side, you know, Maverick, like you said, Maverick is the it's like the redheaded stepchild, the red the red railed stepchild at Cedar Point that that nobody wants to talk about, that everyone loves to talk about Millennium Forest and the big rides and Dragster, uh, but everyone forgets about little old Maverick there in the back of the park. And I'll tell you what, Maverick, uh, for the amount of steel that they used, uh, you know, is is pound for pound the best the best roller coaster on the planet. Um, my God, that thing! That thing has you talk about flow. You talk about story. Um, I'm not so sure about story because horses traditionally don't go upside down. Um, I don't know what horses they ride over there in Sandusky, <laughs> but but my horses don't go upside down very often. Um, uh, but but you know the flow of that ride with the intensity, with the speed, with the hills that are perfectly placed. And then you get the launch in the tunnel out to the second half. That's all intensity. Uh, you know, Maverick is just one of those rides uh, that I think has an amazing flow. Uh, you know, people like to criticize. They're like, oh, well, you know, look at Twisted Colossus. You know, you got the second big lift hill in the middle of it. Well, you, you got you got almost a full stop in the middle of Maverick into a launch. And uh, you know what? I think it's awesome, that stop, uh, you know, or, or even to the rolling stop into the launch. Uh, I think it sets up a whole different part of the second half of the ride. Um, I love it, Maverick. I, I tend to think that the Cedar Point, uh, the Cedar Point contingent, um, I think we're finally going to see Maverick in its rightful place here in the championship going up against Fury 325. And that's going to be a matchup that I think we're going to have a lot of fun talking about. Well, Andy, the Cinderella run for Maverick comes to an end. It is Expedition G-Force moving on to the championship matchup. That is right. Expedition G-Force from Holiday Park in Germany will take on Fury 325 in this year's championship matchup in the steel bracket. Um, 
You know, I would have loved to see Fury versus Maverick because, you know, if you take Manta out of the equation for me on my favorites list, those are my top two coasters, uh, Fury and Maverick. I think those are two of the best roller coasters in the world. Haven't ridden Expedition G-Force, so, you know, I can't properly speak to it. Uh, I would have loved to see Fury versus Maverick here. Uh, but Fury 325 versus Expedition G-Force is not a matchup to sneeze at. That is certainly going to be an intriguing matchup uh, for sure in our championship. Danny, talk about two heartbreaks here in the final four. Uh, you know, on the wood side, we saw Voyage go down, and now we see the sentimental favorite, uh, Maverick, go down. Uh, two really big heartbreaks here. Um, you know, the, the question becomes now, does that lead to uh, guaranteed wins for two of the newest roller coasters out there? Like, I, I think a lot of people yeah. right now are the are the are the championship games anticlimactic now? I, I, how many people chose Lightning Rod and Fury to go all the way here? Uh, you know, I, I think it's funny, though, that. The two newest rides are also the rides at the top of our poll, um, you know, or could potentially be. And that's something you and I talk about a lot. Yeah, like how how much is that new factor playing in here to this? Or are we going to see a complete reversal of fortune and the old guard of El Toro and and um and and Expedition G Force take over? That we always say, well, maybe the voters, maybe the ridership, uh, you know, Fury, we know won last year. Uh, but maybe maybe with this new influx of European voters, maybe we see that change. And maybe with El Toro, maybe there's just too many El Toro lovers out there. Danny, there's a lot of combinations here that can happen. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost like we have right. a new versus old, though, in my book. You know, if, if you look at this. It kind of seems that way. It really does kind of seem that way. And you asked for the number of people who selected each of these rides. So 29 people remaining who selected Lightning Rod to win. Only nine remaining who have picked El Toro to win. 25 people being knocked out uh, by that Voyage defeat there, um, at least with their Wood Champion, not necessarily knocked out of winning the entire uh, contest. But then we also have um, 59 people selecting Fury 325, and all of those people, um, you know, they're, they're, they're still in it here. Um, Maverick had three people selecting it, uh, so those three people are getting knocked out. Um, Intimidator 305 also had four people selected as their champion, so seven people uh, having their steel champion knocked out here, and then 25 seeing their wood champion knocked out uh, with Voyage. Nobody selected Boulder Dash as their wood champion. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, I mentioned this last time, nobody selected Expedition G-Force as their steel champion, so um, if Expedition G-Force, Expedition G-Force were to pull off the upset, and win the steel bracket, uh, nobody in the entire contest would actually select uh, the steel champion correctly, which would be very, very interesting for the contest. Yeah. Um, because the last couple of years, typically, if the the key to not many, very many people in the history of this have picked both right in the same year, so the key would to be to do that. And if Expedition G Force wins, then we already know nobody has done it. Um, now, if Fury wins, there's a whole bunch of people who are going to have both correct because there are several people who have El Toro and Fury and then several people who have Lightning Rod and Fury. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, so let's take a look at our standings real quick before we leave you tonight. Uh, Arthur Poor is still sitting up there in first place. He had both. He had all four of these matchups uh, in in this show here tonight correct. So he has both championship matchups correctly selected. How, how incredible is that to have selected these two matchups all the way through this? He also had the final four correct in both brackets. So he not only had the final four correct, he now has the championships correct in both. Um, so he has really kind of stormed ahead of the pack with 129 points. Next behind him is Nicholas with just 110. Now Nicholas has Lightning Rod and Fury still alive here. Uh, he is both champions 
uh, still in the running. Arthur does not, so that that may be uh, that could be his ultimate downfall here. Uh, my dad's still sitting in third at 109 points. He selected Voyage as his wood champion, so my dad only has Fury left. Um, so you know, you know, when we've got so, some other folks, uh, Maverick Rob Dole dropping down to the number 13 Ooh. spot after a strong showing in the first three rounds. Um, so it looks like he he is probably out of the running here. Um, let's we got to scroll way way down to find our friend, a, a good friend Brian Bass down there in. 50. Um, so not not a strong showing in the second half of the contest for Brian. Um, and once again, uh, my family's personal rivalry. My dad's sitting there at third place. Uh, my mom has actually moved up a few spots here. Uh, she is currently sitting in 49th, and uh, Aunt Sue has slid down to the number 60 spot. Um, out of 73 folks. Now, here's what's interesting. Um, we talked about uh, our, our buddy Ryan, who finished in last place last year. He is actually sitting at 64th right now out of 73 places. So he yeah. is not in last place. He's not at the bottom there. Um, a, a lot of people's goals this year was to place higher than Ryan in this contest. So <laughs> most people are fulfilling that goal at this point. Um, <laughs> no, we like having fun with with Ryan, and he, we were joking with him on Facebook about it the other day. But um, so, so, so that's kind of look at the standings now. Uh, we, we did this last year too. The scenarios as to who will win based on what the championship results here are. So, as you can see here, there are actually three three of the possible four scenarios will result in Arthur winning. Uh, it'll just determine how many points he has. So, if Lightning Rod and Expedition G Force win, uh, Arthur will be the champion with 147 points. If Lightning Rod and Fury win, Arthur will also be the champion with 147 points. So if Lightning Rod wins, it is uh, it, it is it is it is Arthur's uh, it is Arthur's contest um, now. So maybe maybe because of that, we have to announce the Steel Champion first because the Steel Champion will determine if there is a different winner. Um, if El Toro and Expedition G Force win, then Arthur will win, but with only 129 points. If El Toro and Fury win, then uh, Skyler P99 will be our champion. He is currently sitting in seventh place. Um, and the reason that uh, only 104 points, but he is the highest ranked person who has El Toro and Fury. So if El Toro and Fury win, then Skyler will be the champion with 140 points. So uh, the winner of the contest is not guaranteed yet. And, and like we said, he's going to be very dependent on that Steel Coaster uh, matchup. So uh, we know Skyler is rooting for El Toro and Arthur is probably rooting for Lightning Rod at this point. Um We'll have to see how that pans out, but uh, as always, the contest going down to the last show, which is great to see. Absolutely. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, we're super excited to see uh, next week who will take home the steel crown and who will take home uh, the wood crown and absolutely who's going to win the uh, the Thrilling 32 Bracket Challenge as well. Uh, I am, of course, Andrew Rabarczyk from Chicago, Illinois. I'm Danny Miller from Binghamton, New York. And as always, right on, right, Warriors. See you next time, folks.